Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Welcome everyone to the Community Driven Innovation, Shifting Power, Solving Problems webinar series. This is part two, Maker's Residency, creating space for community leaders at the earliest stages of innovation. Before we begin our conversation today, there are just a few housekeeping items I'm gonna review. Today's webinar will be recorded um, and sent to everyone who registered and uploaded on the Health Leads website and on YouTube as well. During today's webinar, we'll have time to answer as many of your questions as possible. So please submit all of your questions using the Zoom Q&A button found on the bottom of your screen. You can also use the Zoom chat feature to share comments, reactions, and links with your fellow attendees and panelists. This webinar also has closed captioning available. Um, to enable closed captioning, please click on the closed caption icon on the bottom of the Zoom screen. And last but not least, at the end of the webinar, we'll be launching a poll and evaluation survey. So please take the time to quickly share your feedback on today's webinar and suggestions for future offerings. So today we will go deep into one of our community-driven innovations, our maker's residency. I'll share an overview of the program, and then we'll turn to a fireside chat between two of our leaders from our 2023 maker's residency community, one of our maker's residency coaches and one of our makers, to learn more about the residency through their experience. And before we wrap up, we will introduce you all to our 2024 inaugural cohort of makers. So we have the opportunity today to go deep with Elsbeth Seitz, who's the manager of analytics for Health Leads and was one of our makers residency beta coaches. Um, and Luis Enrique Bazan, who also goes by Kike Bazan, who's assistant director at Ayudando Latinos a Soñar and was a member of the 2023 Makers Residency Beta Cohort. Their bios will be in the chat um, so you could learn more about them. Um, and I'm your moderator, Sarika Abby Patel. So we believe that those in community with lived experience of the health disparities and challenges faced are best equipped to develop solutions that can address the root causes of these inequities. It is through this community-driven approach that we have the opportunity to effectively break down systemic racism and oppression that has created significant barriers to health, well-being, and dignity. But despite being best equipped to envision solutions, so few BIPOC leaders of small local community-based organizations have the time, the space, and the resources to innovate, and really the chance to just try something new for their communities. These CBOs are often operating in survival mode and aren't receiving the necessary investment to prioritize the problems in their community and design solutions to address them. The Maker's Residency, inspired by artist residencies and early stage incubators, is designed to create an, an environment, a lab that provides the space and time for creativity with the agency and autonomy of community at the center of it. Maker's Residency provides local community leaders with the resources and support to define a pressing need in their community and to create a meaningful solution to break down the systemic barriers causing these inequities experienced. We're gonna play a couple minutes of our Maker's Residency video so you can directly hear about this opportunity from one of our Health Leads coaches, Aranza Sanchez Cruz, and one of our makers from our beta cohort, Lourdes Zuniga of Financial Health Pathways in Texas. The design of our residency, we were thinking about um, what if there would be some way for grants and funding structures to give you the time, space, and resources to try something new. 
And one of the things that was really important to me about the design of this residency is that it minimizes the risk of innovation because innovation inherently, it means you're trying something that doesn't exist. Um, and so you can't prove or 100% predict what's going to happen. Um, and so it takes away some of the risk um, of doing that because we're developing a really, really mindful and well thought out, well researched prototype and then testing it. So you get to know in a very small and low risk environment to get to know if this idea, this dream, this innovation that you have, if it's gonna have the impact that you think it will. The bigger these issues are, the more time we need to build that strategy to tackle them. And when you don't have time, uh, oftentimes that kind of prevents you from innovating. And one of the values of the organization is innovation and collaboration. But to do that, you need a lot of time. So I think that the maker's residency, what has given me is the discipline to have that time, to look for that time and to sort out those issues and address the issues that we wanted to address and not just to provide Band-Aid services that uh, are helping in some way, but really aren't addressing the root cause of the problems and the poverty that we're experiencing in this region. And I think that that is worth taking the steps to make that time. So you can um, learn more about the Maker's Residency um, and learn about the work explored by each of our beta test makers from the video link that's gonna be shared in the chat. Um, but now I'm really excited for us to dig deeper into the Maker's Residency experience and the community-driven innovation pursued by one of our makers. So I'd like to um, invite Kike um, from Ayudando Latinos a Soñar, who I see on, on screen with me, um, and his help leads coach, Elspeth, sights into the conversation. Um, thank you both so much for joining us today. Um, I know this is very much a fireside chat between the two of you. I'm gonna just kick us off with a question. Kiko, Kike, it would be great to just hear from you about what was the knot in your community that you were trying to address in the Maker's Residency? Thank you, Sarika. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, the, I'm very quickly, I live in Half Moon Bay in California. Um, if you guys are from here, you might know about this, but um, something that has been happening in the United States, uh, it has been the violence that is very common. We were victims of a mass shooting in, in January of a year ago. And, and we were recovering also from some violence that happened to our community some years ago also. And, and we started um, thinking about how the Latino community could get involved in what happens with the issues of the town. Um, there are a lot of researchers that come and do research on the farm workers, on the Latino community, on women, and, and the Latino community has also knowledge um, about our own lives. And, and independent if you have gone finished high school or not, there is a knowledge of the community that usually researchers come, grab it, and take it to the universities. And, and we were in a we were healing from the violence. At the same time, we were responding to the trauma, but also we were trying to create a platform to um, to speak our word, what we wanted to say. Alas is an organization has existed uh, for 10 years now. And so it's an accumulation of everything that we're seeing happening in, in the organization. Um, I started with the organization a year ago when the shooting happened uh, as a staff um, because of the need. Um, and so, and it was part of the, of that need to, we want to be part of the solution. We want to bring our culture. We want to say what we have to say and be in conversation with others about what is best for the community, but don't make decisions for us with our opinion. And that was part of the, of the tension that we had, uh, at the time. I, did I answer the question? Yeah, you definitely did. Perfect. Um, well, do you want to then carry that forward and talk a little bit about what 
solution you developed during your time at the residency, maybe how you came in envisioning the solution and how your understanding of what you wanted to do um, changed throughout your time in the residency? Yeah. And so there is, a, so I do have a background in community organizing. Okay. The, in that, and I'm originally from Peru, I work with um, homeless children and we did organize children to also to speak up for themselves. I've been part of different organizations here in the United States that use community organizing. The, also the tradition of the of organizing, the, the farm workers organizing. You know, so there is a tradition here in the United States of community organizing. And here in Hatton Bay specifically, a group of people were already organizing for the housing, um, dignifying living conditions. And and what they were in their organizing, what they were creating, it was so good. I mean, that really was leading action, political action, um, but nobody recognized them, or at least the community didn't recognize how much knowledge there was within the community, okay? Many of these people that were in the streets and didn't even finish middle school, you know, and where they came from. But the knowledge and the capacity to organize and to articulate their ideas, to articulate the experiences, to tell their stories was excellent. I also work at a university, you know, and so it's much better than many of my students in, in master's degree programs or even including some doctoral students, you know, in how they can put together not just the facts, but also the emotions, because there are emotions that come from traumas, that come from looking for a better dignifying life for each person. And all that, when all that gets together, it contagious hearts. And so that connection um, was best told from the people that lit the opportunity. And also that sensation that something is wrong when we work with the community organizers, with the people in trying to name what was wrong, it was incredible. And so we connected that tradition of community organizing with the creation of knowledge. And just to work, um, and it's not as organized as I'm saying it right now, right? But it's, it's in the conversation, we were like, look how much you guys know. Oh my God, we didn't think about that. It's like the researchers were taking notes, you know, from this university is coming to learn about what the work was doing. And so, um, but it was within the community. So we, we wanted to add, um, we wanted to create a research center where, in which these people were key. The community organizers were key in creating the knowledge for the community. And, um, and then it evolved throughout the, throughout the process to call it promotoras. So the Spanish work of community organizing or health workers is to promote something, so promotoras, um, but, but we call them research promotoras. So that they understand that what they are doing is not just mobilizing people, but it's really collecting data, it's articulating data, it's collecting stories, um, articulate the sensation that is happening, the feelings that are happening, how is that affecting people, not just physically, but also emotionally. Uh, we are big on mental health too. Um, and all those articulation, it creates a climate of well-being that it goes beyond the data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great overview of the process that you went through. And I think one of what was great to me about getting to work with you in the residency and see how your idea developed over time is that you came in already so um, so passionate and driven towards moving away from this extractive model of research that your organization and that your community has been a part of in the past and making something that puts the power that you create when you document knowledge 
back into the hands of the community that is providing the knowledge in the first place. And you already had that. You had all of all the right pieces, all of the driving motivation, all of the experience to back all that up. And yet through the your experience in the maker's residency and the ability to collaborate with um, our other makers, you your idea became even more community rooted. Mm -hmm. You went from um, you know, thinking initially more about a, re a, a partnership between how can the relationship and the partnership between research and community be better, still important, of course, but you shifted closer towards how can the ownership of the research be in the community? How can it be performed by somebody who is going to bridge the gap between those two worlds of documenting knowledge and hoarding power and, mm -hmm. you know, making good on the promises that data collection and research can make. Um, how can the people who own the knowledge benefit from it? And it was really, really cool and like such an honor to get to see um, your idea get fleshed out over your 10 weeks um, working on your project. Yeah. Um, and if so, I could say something oh, about that. Yeah. Yes, so it's, it's true. When I first started, it was a research center. And also coming from the university background, right? Universities have research centers uh, that extracts the information from the ground. And so at this organization, at ALAS, um, it's short for Ayudando Latinos a Señar, uh, is we wanted to create the research center so to stay here in the community. But we were still thinking about the classic researchers, you know, and we have, and, and just working with the community and the community organizers and understanding um, and seeing where knowledge belongs, but just try to get it out of, of the university is when we go uh, more deep and deep um, into the, the community organizers and the people that live it. And also because emotions are so important um, because people, the people from the community are the ones screaming, you know, saying things, speaking with a journalist um, about their own stories, uh, also going to the city councils and speak. And then there is another aspect of it that we noticed, now that you mentioned this, that allowed me to think about, you know, the research promotoras also in partnership with all of you, because it was a great conversation all the time. And you guys challenged me also to think beyond what I already believed. That is, um, when people tell their own stories of pain, people are still victims, okay? We tell, we, when we describe what happens, I don't have where to live, I live on the couch, we are five members of our family in one bedroom, you know, we are victims. But when we allow the people that live those experiences articulate what's happening, create an abstraction of it, you know? It's then people become thinkers and teachers of how, what this needs to look like and what it shouldn't happen. Nobody deserves, uh, nobody deserves living in, in, in situations that are not dignifying. Um, the mental health, it affects the mental health of family having of my children when they have to go um, to the bathroom to do their homework, you know? I mean, so, so just moving away a little bit from the descriptive experience to the thinking, the analysis, the synthesizing it, the putting it all together and creating lessons for it, it removes people from, from being victims to become the agents to change situations. And that's what always happens too, is like the researchers reflect from universities, you know, that have degrees. And we don't let the people that live reflect about that and about their own situation and create lessons for society. We only tell them, ask them to tell, you tell us your story, you know? And so, and that's part of the process that also happened in, throughout the residency. It's like in the back and forth with you guys, but also with the team, um, we were able to, to notice and articulate. We knew it. 
we 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 sensed it already you know um but naming it uh that's what that's the important part of the process is naming what is already there you know at your fingertips and you and we haven't articulated well yeah that's so well said and i think interestingly there it's almost a parallel between your experience in the residency and what the solution that you designed is they're both about helping to draw out what's already there and just make it into something more powerful for, for advocacy purposes or for policy change purposes or any sort of change make making that you want to accomplish. Um, like I said, you and your organization and your community, it's all already there. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't add anything really. I'm just there to help you articulate what's or what you your ideas that you already have um to help i, I want to correct i want to do a correction <laughs> quick correction it's not that okay. <laughs> so it's basically because many times we say things and we don't notice where we put the attention you know so when every time we brainstorm all the time right there were questions and we brainstorm there were tasks and we brainstorm and then and you were taking notes and other people sometimes participate in the meetings and also talk, took notes. Um, by just having an echo of what I said, I notice the emphasis that I will put in certain things that I didn't notice I was doing. And also, it's kind of like the spaghetti that you throw to the wall, right? And some things, sometimes it sticks, some other things don't stick. Um, it was kind of like that. It was like a test of what people are listening that really is, it's, it's, a, it's important at that present moment. And so, so it's not just taking notes, but it's also echoing the sensation that goes with the words um, and that allows allow me to see, okay, there is a social resonance here. You know, it's not just me, it's not just subjective, but there is something that is really affecting other people that we need to pay attention to. And that that's what helped me move from me to to you know to to what could happen in relationship with others. Yeah, and I think that that um I mean I'm going to ask you this too of what do you think was unique about Maker's residency and its approach to innovation, but what I think um, from the point of view as a coach in the maker's residency, what was unique about it to me is that thought partnership that you're describing um, of having a designated person to hear, hear you speak, um, take notes if that's you know how you prefer to work, um, reflect back what I'm hearing you say and kind of pointing out, oh, I noticed you said this, you, you're emphasizing this point, you're circling back around this point often. Like, let's, let's talk about how we can make sure to emphasize those points that are, that are very important to you in your project, in the research that you're doing, in the landscape scan, in all aspects of um, your progress on working through your solution. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's, I guess that's my answer to that question, but I would love to know from you, what uh, what was unique to you about the maker's residency and the community driven approach to innovation? Company, I think accompaniment, it was unique. And you know, I'm thesis advisor at the university too. You know, and uh, and and how you guys accompany me, especially you, but other members of your team too. Um, you, I never felt by myself. Um, it was always, and I was never in troubles, you know, when, when, uh, for example, I was behind in something, um, it was always, no worries, we can make it work, you know, is, and so we worked it together. Um, that was unique for sure. And that, that felt, um, unique, not just in how I relate, in how I usually work, but in how people can create things, you know, it's with people really close, shoulder by shoulder, you know, again, community organizing, but in this time, it's like 
just to develop um, our own ideas, our own emotions, our own subjectivity into something that really matters to the society, to, the, to your community. Um, that was that was the highlight. Also, each person, so each of you, each of the companions, uh, you guys have your own concerns. You know, it's um, and just to discover of each person with the gifts of the subjectivity that got involved into the topic to say or the experience that we wanna that we wanna bring uh, is shaped differently. I mean if I can use you Elspeth, it's you're very melodic, you know, you're always dancing. Uh, and so everything that had had to have a rhythm. You always look for the rhythm of things and and how that rhythm uh, didn't get off beat almost, you know? Uh, and so, and that's how you allow me to, to do the, the work. It was, it was because I will be choppy, you know, it comes in drafts, you know? And, and so there are gaps in certain moments. And, and so you will, uh, you will help me to fill up that gap based on the rhythm that you will hear in the, in the experiences that I will share in the reflections I had. Um, the same with the other colleagues, you know, each person brings their own subjectivity or their own, um, just to continue with music melodies, you know, to this and that, and that, um, and then we can, we can find the rhythm together while we're building together. And it wasn't just me, I will share the rhythm of my organization, of what we were feeling, of what we were using, um, it wasn't therapy, okay? But but we will, you know, but we will always share uh, moments that had a beat. Uh, we will create what was the social beat that it would have. So, um, so that's why the company was so good. We were dancing together, you know. It was uh, it was it was a shared melody that we created, and um, and that usually doesn't happen. Yeah, we had a really great special group for the beta cohort, which for those we are calling it the beta cohort. It was just our first go at running the residency program. And so this next one is the inaugural one. Mm -hmm. And um, we had such a fantastic group. And I, I loved getting to see the way that your collaboration with with myself, with the other coaches and with the other makers all fed into the ideas that you brought um, into the solution that you developed. And um, in our upcoming cohort, there will be five makers. So mm -hmm. it will be slightly larger, but I, I think it's gonna be another amazing group of people. And, um, and uh, yes. I wanna say something about that too. I mean, sure. also, when I share my ideas with the other people participating in the cohort, uh, they have really good insight too, because they have a very practical experience from their own organizations. And, and that's usually something that doesn't happen either when you write a thesis. You know, you present and nobody is gonna give you good ideas or practical ideas. Um, people might ask you questions to challenge you, but in this case, it was people were asking questions to, con to build based on their experiences. Um, and so that was, that was also very, very uh, unique of this cohort. Yeah, it's we were much more um, wanting the collaboration to happen throughout the whole process and not like a show and tell at the very end where you present your work and you get feedback and that's great. But um, it's, in our opinion, better to be speaking and exchanging ideas with the rest of the group throughout so that if somebody has a really great idea that gels nicely with what you're working on, you have that earlier on and you can incorporate it um, into more of your thinking. Um, so I do want to, I want to ask, what is the status of your, uh, the solution that you worked on today and what impact has it had, or do you see it having on your community as you continue to build it out? Yeah. First of all, it helped me articulate what we wanted. 
And so we started with a small grant, very small grant to hire uh, one of these per people, um, a person working with a housing, uh, dignifying housing movement, uh, which ended up being excellent. And because now she's leading a lot of this effort, um, we have been able to increase, even now we have research grants that are coming in. Uh, we are creating the research center uh, in the in the organization. And it's still evolving. We think that we are gonna have a solid research center uh, probably in two years or year and a half or so. Uh, but we have some good grants that are helping now finance this person to get almost full time and, and bring other researchers. We still need to work with the universities because it's important, you know, it's, uh, and so we have built a bridge. We have some college or university people um, also participating of this grant, uh, a bunch of staff um, from, from our organizations doing it. So it's moving forward and, and everything started, you know, um, with what we articulated because that, that gave us the language that we wanted to, to present. That's incredible. Um, so great to hear that it's moving forward still. Um, uh, it might not. So you you left the residency having created a pro what we're calling a prototype of your solution. So like a very small scale, um, manageable That's right. version of what your ultimate goal is. And um, for you, the prototype was this research promotora job description. So we worked together to figure out what that could look like, what what skills and knowledge would this person have, what would, you know, in the dream world, what would they bring to the table and what would they do in their role? And I think even though it's it seems like a small component of what is ultimately going to become a research center at Alas, um, I hope it seems to me that it was valuable to have the space to really think deeply about just in this small starting starting point um, in a dream world, like what does this person accomplish and how do they contribute to this overarching goal that you have of bringing the knowledge of the community out and empowering them and um, improving the research dynamic that currently exists, um, especially among your community. So it's it's great to hear that what started so small is already mm -hmm. in what hasn't even been I don't know how long it's been since we finished some amount of months mm -hmm. and that it's already having an impact and you can clearly see how it's going to have an even bigger impact in the future yeah and also it was so we were thinking about this you know and then we I jumped into the working with you guys during all that time. It forced me to speak with a lot of people from the organization and other people. That helped a lot because then we all were in the same page already. So I think that's a key element also of the of the work is just to be in constant communication with your own team because you can end up with a concept that doesn't really represent your organization too. You know, so so the so the conversations that I was sharing with people, and especially with people interested in the research center, uh, they they were on board on that. And, and the grant that they applied, that they did, the people were like, oh my God, that's a great idea, you know? So so it passes on to other people. So, it's, uh, so, so I think that's part of the momentum that we started talking about it, but parallel, I was having the same conversations within the organization. Right, that's so true. Well, I'd like to make sure that we get to answer any questions that have come up from participants. So I'd like to pass the mic back to Sarika. Great. Thank you both so much. Um, I just wanted to reflect on a few insights that came from that conversation. And um, I'm not even going to use my own words because it was said so beautifully by Kike, but um, really this, this notion of you know, researchers are giving that given that space to reflect, but we don't give that space for community to reflect. Um, and, you know, both seeing that in the design of what you developed through the residency, but also what the residency gave you um, around that space to reflect and that collaboration with others to reflect. 
Um, I loved the find the rhythm together while building together. Um, I think that speaks really to both the the lab space for that creativity, um, as well as that kind of thought partnership to work together and find that music that also helps build that um, innovation. Um, and then that third around community and how critical that component is. And, you know, often as leaders, you're kind of isolated working on your own and being able to have the community of other leaders and the community of uh, coaches in, in the experience seemed like it was really valuable. So thank you so much for, for sharing those insights. I want to turn it to some of the questions um, from the audience. Um, so the first is um, to you, Kike, and I, I, I think most will probably be to you, but um, what, what do you think would have happened with the concept of the research center and or the research promotora um, if you were not in the maker's residency? I think, I think we were on that path, okay? In the path in which we are now, but I think it would have taken us longer um, because it's not easy to find spaces like this to think about this. We are always doing, doing, doing at our jobs that this moment just to think and articulate something that we really want to have the time to do, uh, it wouldn't have happened this fast. I, I, I would say that that would have been for sure. And I don't know if it would have happened really, you know? I mean, probably we would have, because we always accept researchers and we're like, ah, oh, we wish that we'll stay here, you know? It probably will have continued doing something like that. Um, but um, I think it's time and, and the opportunity to make it work. Yeah, I think really it felt critical to have that concentrated 10 weeks of time, right? That's that right. really forced the kind of development and the evolution of something that you had in your mind, but didn't really have that space yeah. um, to move it forward. Um, how did you take, again, this is for, for you, Kike, how did you take this to the stage of innovation or... Um, Sorry, I just want to make sure I capture this correctly. So how did you take this take this forward to this stage of innovation? Um, and what do you see as the positive kind of changes benefiting your community? So innovation for me is knowledge with a creative act. Okay. So it's uh you know something in a way, in a you use creativity, and creativity for me is social. And it doesn't happen just by myself. I mean, me and there are three and an apple follows my head. No, that's not how innovation happens for me. Innovation happens in meeting new people, um, having an open, honest conversation. And in one of the videos, there was, um, I think somebody mentioned in the video that uh, we don't know where this is going to take us. Trusting that, that element is not, I don't have an agenda already knowing what the end is gonna be. I come with something I would like to do and suddenly it evolves in certain ways. Um, I think that for me, I mean, the network of you guys, I mean, it's it's incredible having access to, to people that are always thinking about creativity and who do I connect you with? Where can you fit? You know, I think creativity happens like that. It's when different elements come without an agenda necessarily, your interest. You know, each person brings their interest, put on, on the table and something happens. Um, that's how I will consider um, innovation. It's a creative act that you just use the elements you have around it and, and you put tenderness, you know, um, love, effort into something and something, and if you continue being part of that, not forgetting that emotion, you know, that put you there in first place, but having that emotion that drives you to do something, to to do, to make the change you want to do, you are going to be able to use those elements. So for me, the innovation is very social, you know, it's very collaboration. I love that. That is that is so beautiful, and I feel like that 
it just resonates so much because I think we all felt that with the community uh, of the, um, the, the beta makers and the coaches. And I will say very much feel that way with the new community of the cohort. It's just everyone is centered in that, that passion and that mm -hmm. desire to see that change for their community. And that is so inspirational and being in that type of environment allows for that kind of creativity. Mm -hmm. um, so that was just really beautifully said. I'm gonna ask uh, one more question to both of you before we transition. Um, I'd love to just hear from you both. What, what would you say is the biggest uh, takeaway or learning from your time in the residency? that you hope to apply into practice in your in your own work, um, both Kike, as you think about it through the lens of Alas and Elsbeth as well, as you think about your, your work outside of the maker's residency. You wanna start, Elsa? Sure. Um, honestly, I'm very tempted to say what Kike just said, like a direct quote of, creativity is a social act and that it's a collaborative act that was um very powerful and I I know you just said it a second ago but that might be like <laughs> the takeaway for me um that like I like I said all of these ideas have been in these communities in the, these makers but what the space and time and resources that the makers residency provides it provides those things as well as a a built-in group of collaborators and and thought partners to to get you out of your own head and to start working on this idea and bounce ideas off of other people and i think that's the takeaway for me is in all things that can be valuable and um any project that you're working on professionally personally can benefit from a good thought partner or a multiple good thought partners to fill in the gaps that you don't have to reflect back what you're saying to them and hear it said in a slightly different way is pretty powerful. So I think that'll be it. That, that'll be my answer. Yeah, for me, it's uh, meeting you guys. Um, it's a very kind uh, community for sure. Uh, the hospitality is incredible. And, and, um, and I want to be around good people with good hearts, because then um, then amazing things happen. You know, is um, I'm a big believer in 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 tenderness, as I said before, in love. When you put love into something, and and that's gonna create new paths, especially we're reflecting again the experience of why we do what we do, responding to violence where cruelty sees, confronts bigger cruelty to see who wins, you know? So I, I do believe that connecting hearts together to do things in a different way uh, that benefits our communities. Um, I mean, that, that's what I love. That's why I'm still, still around, you know, because, because of, the, of your hospitality. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. And um, I mean, we're still around with you for a very similar reason. And we're just so, so grateful to have had you um, in our first um, cohort for the Makers Residency. Uh, we're so grateful that you're going to be continuing on uh, in partnership with us as a mentor for our, our new cohort. Um, and we're, we're just excited, excited to see where you're able to continue to go with, with the amazing work that you're doing for the community of Half Moon Bay, California. Um, so thank you, um, thank you both um, for your time. Um, I am going to um, transition us to uh, introduce our um, newest um, members of our Makers Residency. Um, as I said, we're excited to have Kike continue on we're also fortunate enough to have Lourdes Zuniga, who was featured in um, the video earlier, to also continue on both as mentors. Um, and I'm excited to formally announce our inaugural cohort. Um, we have five inspiring leaders uh, of community-based organizations in the United States who make up our new cohort um, from Hawaii to California, <clears throat> Colorado, 
uh, Wisconsin and North Carolina, uh, really representing diverse regions, community served, um, and health inequities being addressed as priorities in the community. We're really fortunate that three of them are able to join us today on stage to uh, introduce themselves. Um, so I'm gonna have them one at a time, um, Langston and then Niasha and Tigo to come off mute and off camera and um, introduce yourself, um, your organization, where you're based geographically, um, a little bit about your community um, and what you're excited about and hoping to get out of the maker's residency. All right. Well, I heard my name first, so I'll just I'll jump in. So I am Langston Verdain. I'm the founder and executive director of uh, MKE Fresh Air Collective. Uh, I've been doing the work of air quality monitoring in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and primarily black and brown communities for about four years. Um, this work is, is really important to me. I um, started off this work because I was working um, in uh, asthma at our local uh, children's hospital. And frankly, I was impatient. I was impatient with the speed of healthcare. I was impatient with the speed of government. Um, and, um, you know, I'm also very creative and very innovative and got some air monitors donated. Uh, and it kind of just went from there and spiraled from, from there. Um, and uh, fast forward today and, and, and now a... Uh, 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 registered nonprofit organization. We've deployed uh, 15 air monitors across the city of Milwaukee, have over 10,000 uh, followers to those air monitors. Uh, and it's it's growing by leaps and bounds. Um, very excited to, to have the support of Health Leads to, to grow the organization and importantly, uh, help us kind of solve some of the problems that, that we're facing as it relates to um, to air quality in Milwaukee. In Milwaukee right now, um, as I speak, it is 70 degrees. Our normal high in Milwaukee on a day like today is 39 degrees. Um, and so when we think about climate change and climate issues and how it impacts people of color, um, uh, this is, uh, you know, frankly, as much as on an individual level, I hate the cold. Uh, it's one of the, the, the reasons that, you know, I, I fret, uh, you know, living in a, in a Northern city, um, I also get worried uh, when I walk outside and don't have a coat on uh, in Wisconsin on uh, on February 27th. And so, um, you know, this is a uh, this is uh, interesting times we live in. And so I'm excited to be on this journey with you all and, and excited to, to, to meet uh, some of the fellow makers for the first time today uh, and, and hear some of the work that you all are working on as well. Thank you so hey, much. We'll go from, go ahead. We'll go. Go from, we'll go from Milwaukee to Colorado. Let's let's take a plane, a plane ride on this side. Um, I'm Tigo Joyum, uh, from based in Denver, Colorado. And uh, I work with the African Chamber of Commerce Colorado. Uh, the African Chamber, as you can hear, is more business. So the organization was formed, I think, back in 2009 by Nakuda Ricks, where by then, today she's a state representative for the city of Aurora, and um, I joined the African Chamber during COVID when they needed a volunteer to help out with uh, COVID, you know, awareness information. And I was the closest person in the community she knew who had a master's in public health. So I was like, you know, I I know a little bit. I've learned a few things. I can jump in and help the community. And we started doing COVID vaccine at churches, at mosques at the grocery stores. And then after that, we started sharing um, health related information. Even when chicken pox happened, we, a monkey pox up, we, we went and share other information. And also just regular vaccine, we just used the momentum and platform we had to keep sharing health related information. So when things was winding down with COVID, I said, well, we already have established a community that are you know, seeking our services, I would stay and I will create the African Chamber Public Health Department. So again, innovation is a social act. So socially, I started the the Public Health Department of the of the African Chamber that I lead now, and I'm building it 
And um, the, the reason I applied for the re maker residence is because of uh, like a current problem we have, which, you know, I've had community of workers that had hired through COVID grant and there was really no training. Like anyone who had community connection was a community of worker. He was distributing masks and hand sanitizer and talking to the community about COVID. But now there is a law coming where in 2025, like California, a uh, community of worker will be reimbursed by the Medicare and Medicaid. And our community book of workers don't qualify. I'm like, huh, yesterday we did, today we don't. So I'm like, let's step up and make sure this doesn't happen in the future. So that's why I'm here at the Makers Residency to learn how to navigate this without passion. And just like my previous speaker, I don't like the speed of, you know, the slow speed of things and how things are so bureaucratic when it fits some people and then the, the rule changes when it fits some people. So I just want things to be fair and equitable to everybody. So I'm here. Uh, I'm also a student. As you can see behind me, I'm a student in Boston. I'm doing a doctorate in public health uh, with a focus in health equity, spirituality and brain health. And so... I'm very happy to be here and happy to learn from you all and learn with you in this process. Thank you again for the selection and thank you for the previous makers whose video inspired me to apply. Thank you. All right. Well, that leaves me. I'm Naisha Frey. I'm honored to be here today. Um, I am, as you can see on the top uh, left of my screen, the CEO of Naisha Frey Consulting, LLC. Um, in addition to that, I serve as a board member of a small but mighty Black family foundation here on the East Coast of North Carolina. Um, and so uh, as a board member, uh, I saw the Health Leads opportunity to continue the great work that we've been doing. Um, we're fortunate that we have a board of people who are community connected. We have a working board, our organization, and how things work is through our board members. Um, we don't have a staff, you know, we're, we're a small but mighty foundation. And we have um, been a trusted source uh, of resources to our community, whether that was related to, um, you know, summer camps for kids to go on STEM, um, trainings or whether that had to do with COVID-19, um, gaining access to information, we call facts, not fear campaign. Um, and um, even just fun, fun. People enjoy our um, fundraisers and being able to come out and, and meet and greet folks. Um, hello from Harnett County. Um, and so we at Gregory B. Davis Foundation wanted to extend the work that we were doing. Um, and I thought that this was a great partnership for us because we have had some national partnerships um, in the past and it helps to give our small but mighty um, Black Family Foundation a platform um, for people to learn more about what community rooted organizations can accomplish um, and what we can do um, as, as partners to address health equity. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that partnership was there, but we also are very picky about our partners. Um, and one of the things that I look for is an organization and was impressed by was an organization that wasn't afraid to say the world were race, racism or institutionalized racism. Eastern North Carolina, I'm sure my colleague from Harnett County can attest to this, has a long and persistent history of deep rooted um, uh health disparities um, and it and it addresses every area that you can imagine. Um, out of a hundred counties, our Roanoke Valley area is consistent consistently in the lower 90 when it comes to ranking our counties. And it will be of no surprise to many of you that a lot of these counties, especially the ones that I represent, um, are predominantly black. They also have a larger population of Native Americans, um, as well as Latino community. Um, and so what we want to do is equip our local leaders um, and health advisors 
with a unified vision around health equity so that we can work collectively to affect change. And what the community has also shared with us is that they want to see some measurable um, advancements. And so this uh, maker's residency would allow us to be innovative uh, with national partners to think outside of the box, to share our story, um, to gain new resources in time, right? Um, so that we can execute and follow up on what the community has trusted us with, the call that they have given to us um, to res be responsive and to bring other members around the table to help us co-create um, solutions. So I am delighted to be here representing both Naisha Frey Consulting LLC um, and I will give a shameless plug. Um, there's an ad that I have out right now for a podcast, um, my podcast, Questions You Didn't Ask. And that ad is showcasing Cameron Smith, the Executive Director of Communities and Partnership. And I think she really captures one of the main reasons why I admire Health Leads and what you all are doing. Um, and that is giving us the opportunity to try something new, to fail, to succeed, to dust ourselves off, to get back up again and try again. Unfortunately, many of us in, um, in the Black community don't get the opportunity to successfully fail forward. And I see this as an opportunity for us to learn. I expect that we will not fail. Um, but if anything, but the main reason why we won't fail is because all the lessons that we learn through this process will be a win. Um, and I just appreciate the fact that there's an opportunity for us to, um, to work through these centuries old, um, deeply entrenched um, institutions that have made it a point to keep Eastern North Carolina and the Roanoke Valley area at the bottom. And we're gonna push up and rise up. Thank you. No, thank you so much. Um, so, so grateful to have the three of you in our, our, our new cohort, so inspired by your work and really looking to next week when we get to start off and dig in. Um, so thank you everyone for um, your expertise today. Um, we just launched um, our Zoom poll, so please take a moment to fill that out, um, as well as an evaluation that will um, pop up when you exit Zoom. Um, we really appreciate everyone who joined us today to listen in on this conversation, to engage, and to ask us questions. We'll be sending out a copy of the recording to all of you who registered. Um, and please remember to join us for the last webinar in our series on March 17th, Shifting Power Through a Co-Designed Assessment Tool. Uh, you can sign up for the remaining webinar using the link in the chat. Um, and you can learn more about our um, new cohort of Makers Residency in the link in the chat as well. Thank you so much.